many a times uh, we teachers include higher order thinking skills when we prepare a question paper only then it comes to our mind so that this percentage of questions can be of higher order thinking skills where high achievers can also be given a challenge yes or no teachers apart from that when do we think of this higher order thinking skills or where do we pose such questions or where do we come across these higher order thinking skills i need a genuine and an honest answer many a times as math teachers when it comes to the question paper only we have this in our mind apart from that do we do anywhere else in the classroom yes teachers or we don't set a question paper with higher order thinking skills also is it so can i take it in that way i think the latter is fine ma'am in a way of uh, teaching ma'am okay in a way of teaching so oh. uh, do you you mean to say in all the topics you mean no, no, to say that in all topics do you mean to say in all the topics ma'am uh, maybe after uh, finishing a chapter or uh, after giving the introduction of a chapter mm. we can take a real life example uh, through hots mm. and ask a question to the child so that we will be able to understand if the child is at least grasp very few points of the introduction and uh, i would uh, say that uh, in question paper only if we include uh, hot questions mm. um, it uh, will uh, show a benefit because they will be already aware of all the problems that's in the textbook because they will be practicing every problem but uh, mm. when we include a hot question um, that would all, uh, enable uh, the understanding of the uh, chapter okay so let us split this word into two parts higher order and then thinking then skills so first let us look at thinking what is meant by thinking what is meant by thinking i am splitting the words higher order then thinking then how to develop the skills let's split it up into three parts so what is thinking thinking is the process of using a mind to understand matters first we have to understand what it is then make judgments make judgments here in the mathematical sense it would be what am i going to do to solve this first i have to analyze here it actually means it has to be the child mind has to analyze first understand then analyze then apply the logic then solve the problems so what is thinking it is a process of using a mind to understand ma understand matters then make judgments then solve problems so here one teacher has uh, put it in the chat as analytical skills what is thinking it is developing the analytical skills it is not only the analytical skills the overall skills that is necessary for a human being to solve any kind of problem to solve any kind of problem it includes all the skills only analytical skill is not necessary yes all the skills she has men mentioned it as yes all the skills so all the skills are important for a human being to solve any problem for that matter needless to say a math problem so higher order thinking is usually mentioned in short as hot hot we use that capital we use as capitals hot hot as short form so now what is this higher order thinking skills going to do skills of course we know there are various skills one amongst them is to improve the thinking skills so what is higher order 
Now let's come to the first part of the word. What is higher order? Then there must be something lower order, right? What is higher order? Students have the ability to solve problems faster and more efficient. Only faster. If I'm very good in the concept, I can do it very fast. If I have a, if I done, if I have done lot of practice, I'll be able to do it in a very quick way. Am I not right, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Ah. So, ma'am, ma master would be one of the factor or one of the criteria, higher order. Ma'am, without, without memorizing, uh, the thinking level will be higher, ma'am. So, okay, without memorizing. Suppose if I am not memorizing anything, I will not be able to solve, solve certain problems. When it goes to higher classes, if I don't know the formula, if I don't memorize the formula, do you think I'll be able to solve certain problems? Ma'am, if, if we are strong in concepts, uh, mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, do the formulas also without memorizing, ma'am. Okay. You mean to say that I'm, I should be strong in the concept, concepts, even without knowing the formula, you'll be able to do, right? Yes, ma'am. But uh, will that work out for all the topics, ma'am? Of course, it is there. If I'm if I'm thorough in the concept, then I should definitely know the formula. So there, little bit of memory is also needed. Little bit of memory is also needed. We cannot do away with memorizing certain things. Like if you yeah, ask me Tirukural, we need to learn Tirukural. Of course, yeah. I cannot say that I, if I know the concept of Tirukural, I can do anything. No, sometimes we need to memorize certain things which will create a long-lasting effect in the mind. What we have learned in the lower classes, yes, it creates a long-lasting memory. And if, even if we are asked today, we are able to recollect that and deliver it to the students. How is it possible? A little bit of memory is also needed. It is something beyond memorizing. It is something beyond memorizing. So we cannot exactly do away with memorizing. Of course, that is also needed. Higher than the memory level. Of course, memory level, it should be there. It is something beyond the memory level that the child or whoever it is is able to perform by applying the so-called skills, by applying the so-called skills. So how to apply the so-called skills? Why not others are not able to apply that? So uh, when this, uh, let us take it as an example for addition problem. In the lower classes, when we give an addition problem, what do we do? Say for, say for example, a second standard or a third standard, a question. How do we pose an addition problem? It can be as uh, applications in real life or a direct question, or sometimes we as well arrange the question and we give it, right? That is how usually, usually it is done. Now that same addition problem, how can I recreate it as a hot question? How can I recreate it as a first question? So, sir has said they well known about symbols and signs. Yes, of course, they are very sure about what sign and what symbol to use. Yes, sir. So, what are you trying to mean, sir, by that? May I know? I'm not getting your point, actually. Sir, would you mind explaining what is your point? Sir, go in, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Please, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I will add one more point. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, about thinking. Uh, ma'am, uh, yes, we, uh, they, student well known about uh, sign and symbol. Mm. They don't know plus, minus, and uh, other symbols. So, uh, in this uh, era, we will... Uh, uh, we will talk about thinking, so we uh, they will know about the uh, sign and symbol. Hmm. You, you understand? Yes, sir. Now I got it, what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, a simple addition problem can be reworded to make it a hot question. A simple addition problem can ask like addition, some addition puzzles. Ma'am, puzzles are different and hearts are different. Puzzles are actually like 45 plus 
Okay. From Anita, the question is, ma'am. From Anita, the question is, uh, I'll just like to see Anita, ma'am. Teachers, are you able to see Anita, ma'am? Yes, 45 plus 7 is equal to 72. And in the place of uh, 7, there is a dash between 7, right, ma'am? The tens place is missing, right? Am I right, ma'am? Um, in the place, the number is missing, ma'am. Hmm. Okay. So, 45 plus dash, then 7. So, the tens place in, is missing there. Then it is equal to a dash 72, right? So, hundreds place is missing there. Ma'am, I uh, think this question. No, ma'am, in hundred place, the. There is no dash. No, no dash, ma'am. No dash. Oh, okay. no, there I'm is no dash. No dash. Ma'am, can you please tell me, is this an addition problem? I you have given 45 plus, actually it is a dash, is equal to yes, 72. To find out the digit. Uh, is it an addition problem? Uh, no, it's a subtraction. Yes, ma'am, it is a subtraction problem, right? Yes, so what yes, happens yes. here is, many a times children are not able to identify whether they have to add or subtract. That is the problem. Here, actually, the subprehend is missing. In the subprehend also, one part of the question is missing. That's all. One tense place is missing. That's all. So, it is a subtraction problem. Let's look at Sunita ma'am's uh, question. Question can be asked as your friend has two chocolates and you are having five chocolates. If your friend is giving all her two chocolates, how many will you have? Of course, this is a question for first standard. Okay. She gives you all the two chocolates to you. How many chocolates do you have? It is, I think it is a direct question. Am I right, teachers? It is a direct question. Of course, for a first standard level, it may be a little difficult for them. Yes, we can also consider it as a hot question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So now, thoughts can be reworded. A simple word problem, as you say, or a story, some what you, whatever you say can be reworded to make it as a thoughts question. So the biggest challenge what the child is going to face is first she has to, she or he has to comprehend the question correctly, then understand the question correctly. Comprehension is very important in mathematics language. So after comprehending it correctly, understand the question, then analyze the question as to which operation should be applied. Then solve the sum. Then solve the sum. So higher order thinking or thought for sure takes thinking to higher levels than restating the facts. So instead of directly applying the operation and just finding the answer, instead of simply giving add 23 plus 49, that's all. Every child would do it in the class for that matter, even if they are in the lower grade. So that is a very direct question. So instead of that, it takes thinking to higher levels. What operation has to be applied or what should be the concept that has to be applied to arrive at the answer? Yes, teachers. So let's move on to the next slide, ma'am. Uh, just it is... Uh, okay, come to the rote memory. So here, what do we mean by rote memory? We have discussed this in our earlier sessions also. What do we mean by rote memory? The teacher teaches in the class. Most of the time, when, when we talk about rote memory, it is only teacher-centered classes. This also we have discussed in our previous sessions, where only the teacher teaches and the children are only listening in the class. Sometimes that listening also doesn't happen and it becomes only hearing in the class. It makes a lot of difference between hearing and listening. So many a times, they just listen they hear the information and then they give it back. So everything will be solved in the class, right from the example till the exercise problems. Everything will be the will be solved in the problem will, will will be solved in the class, and there will be a process in which the sums will be solved, 
and only that method will be followed by the children in the examination or in the classwork notebook, whatever it is. So apart from that, they will not apply their skills to arrive at the solution for the same sum in a different manner. So now what is the difference between road memory and thoughts? So here, first the child hears the information. When I say hears the information, they are actually listening very effectively, then understand what it is being done. Then they infer. What do you mean by infer teachers? What do you mean by infer? They relate that to the topics that is being already taught to them. Connect that particular concept with this problem that is being given. Then categorize. What is meant by categorizing? They are able to categorize it into different uh, situations. Say for us to, for a, for a instance, if it is in real, real life application problems, they are able to categorize it as whether it is an addition or a subtraction or a, a multiplication or a division sum or in, in fact, in, if it is a fractional problem or can I do the same fractional problem as a decimal problem or if it is a decimal problem, can I apply my time, time concept and get the answer? All these things they categorize, then manipulate, then they decide on which is easier for them to solve the sum. Sometimes when we see fractional problems can also be done in the time, in the, using the time concepts. And decimal problems also can be used in the time concept. Many a times measurement sums can also be done as a uh, fractional sums. So these overlapping always happens in the mathematical concepts. So they manipulate as to which one is easier for them to apply and then they apply to arrive at the solution. Then they arrive at the solution. So in thoughts, first they listen, first they hear, they grasp the information, then understand it, then infer that, then they connect it to the concepts that they have learned then they categorize as to which has to be applied, then manipulate on that problem as to which is easier for them, then they apply to arrive at the solution. Yes, teachers. So now let us see what are the different ways to access the higher order thinking. I think all of you would have seen this in our earlier uh, sessions also. How do we access to higher order thinking skills? So let's go into that. First, let us see about the concepts. So first they have, when a student is exposed to a new concept, it is important to connect the new concept to the topic or the concept that has already been taught to them. That is very, very important. So whenever we are introducing the new concept, so that particular concept has to be related to the topic that has already been known to the child. Then, first thing is that, suppose for instance, we were talking about decimal and uh, fraction chapter. So when I talk about decimal chapter, decimal is nothing but representing fractions using the dot. That's all, the decimal form. So any fraction can be expressed as a decimal form and any decimal form can be expressed as a fractional form uh, in the lower classes. Definitely we are talking about classes one to five, not about the higher classes there. Some are uh, recurring decimals, all, the, all those things we are not talking about now. So when we are dealing only about the primary mathematics. So let's, when let's teach that particular concept relating to the topic that they have already done. Next is, after the concept connection can be done by classifying. What do you mean by classifying, categorizing, recognizing patterns and chaining? What do you mean by classifying? Teachers, any idea? So uh, we have to classify the concept which is, which is we are going to uh, talk 
Yes, yes, you are right. We have to classify the concepts. Arranging. Splitting into groups. Very good. Yes, ma'am. We are splitting into groups. We have to classify. Yes. Arranging. Arranging, ma'am. Very good, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is arranging. Then, after classifying, we have to categorize it. We have to categorize it. So what is the idea behind each of this connecting process is to find all the relatives of that concept. So you have groups into so many uh, subtopics. So all that we have to categorize. We have to bring it under one shell. Now, this process will definitely take a lot of steps. Yes, this process will take a lot of steps for us so that it takes place in certain order. Very careful. Please, teachers, please note that it takes place in a particular order. For example, let us take decimals. So when we are talking about decimals, how do we relate first? How do we relate that concept to the... First, how do we introduce the concept? The fractional topic would have already been done. So we relate the decimal topic to the fractional topic. So that is how we are doing it first. So we often, what do we do? Relate the topic that is already known to them and then come to the uh, present topic and find a relation so that they are comfortable in going from known to unknown. Then what do we do? We classify. We classify them into groups. Okay, what do we do in decimals? That is very important. So what am I going to do in decimals? First, I should give up, give them a gist of what I'm going to do. So when I classify that, I should be able to describe what is going to be covered in that topic. Then categorize it. How do we categorize? What do we do to categorize that? We have to follow a particular order, right? We have to follow a particular order. Yes, teachers. After classifying, I have to do a particular order. I'm categorizing into different different groups. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Yes. Ma yes. So in decimals, when you them, the first part would be to show them the places. What is the decimal first? First, start from what is the decimal? What is the point referring to? And what are the other two parts? on the left side of the decimal point and at the right side of the decimal point. First, that we have to relate. Yes, teachers? So starting from that, we cannot directly jump to uh, converting fraction into decimal or equivalent decimals, unlike decimals. All these are directly going to like addition and subtraction of decimals. That is not possible. But start from what is the decimal because that is the time where we introduce the topic. We are introducing the topic. So what we have to do is start from what is a decimal. Make them very clear how a decimal should look like and how should I read a decimal number and why should I use decimal numbers and where should I use decimal numbers. So all this we have already done in our previous sessions. So start from that order. So then, then they have to know the places of each decimal digit or decimal number. So come back, come to the place value chart of a decimal number. Then after finding the place value chart, easy for the child to grasp, then go with the place values of the decimal, each decimal digit. Go to the place values. So when you come to place values, the place values of any decimal digit can be expressed in two ways. Either it can be expressed as a decimal number or it can be expressed as a fraction also. So there again, we are relating to the previous topic or to the known topic. Then go in the order. After that, after the place, place values, everything. Then come to like how it is related to the fraction. How can a fraction can, how, how is a fraction written as a decimal and how a decimal is written as a fraction? Then, of course, before that, of course, we learn them how to read a decimal number, how to represent a decimal number, all that is done. Then, conversion of fraction into decimal and decimal into fraction. And how do we expand the decimal number in both the ways, fractional and decimal expansion? All these are 
we are following the particular order so there should be a sequential order before we complete the topic make sure that the sub topics are done in a sequential manner we cannot just overlap sorry i forgot to teach this anyway now we will do after this topic let me do that suppose imagine if uh, without teaching equivalent uh, decimals can we jump to the addition and subtraction saying that okay it's not, if you add on zero that is enough why should i add zero there suppose if i add uh, 23.79 plus uh, 5.6675 the child should be able to arrange it properly in that particular place where a digit is missing she has to put a zero right because first time they are doing it they should understand why it should be given a zero if the teacher is going to sell, tell them just put a zero if there is a digit missing there just put a zero this has become a practice in many places without knowing the concept of that particular zero in that particular decimal number they just add zero for that only we insist on going this uh, taking the subtopics in a very sequential manner so there of course the equivalent decimal is very very important without knowing the equivalent decimals we cannot jump on to addition and subtraction so that is how so it is like a chain it is like a chain so one after the other if it is followed each one has a connectivity to the previous subtopic each subtopic has a connectivity to the previous subtopic that is why we always tell if the order is lost then it is difficult for the child to understand the concept yes ma'am next one so now what are the problems in understanding understanding the concepts why is it difficult for some of the children to understand the concepts and how, why is it that some of them are very easy in understanding the concepts and for some why do they need a real push a shaky grasp of the concept understanding of a concept is shallow or narrow so what do you mean by shallow or narrow when the teacher is not able to elaborate give uh, enough of examples of or enough of practice to the children to make them understand that particular concept then it becomes very shallow or narrow yes teachers do you all get my point many a times we do this because we are not having time to complete the concepts or complete the portions what do we do we take the liberty of just introducing the concept in a very short span of time then move away with the exercise problems so when the concept is not done in a way it has to be done giving enough of examples and enough of practice or enough of um, connectivity between the real life applications it becomes very difficult for the child to understand the concept then what could be the other reason relying on rote memory too much so what do they do suppose uh, the teacher has taught like how i gave you the example just add on zero in the addition or subtraction so what do they do mentally they are prepared okay wherever there is there is a digit missing i just add zero that's all finished and what happens is they they uh, they memorize that rote memory and which in turn is a failure for the child to understand the concept so what happens is many a times in subtraction we see they push the digits as comfortable as they as they are and they insert the zero in the irrelevant place so for example when we add say for 2.1 plus 1.73 or subtract 2.1 minus 1.73 so it should be 2.10 minus 1.73 my right teachers so what do they do they push that one to the hundreds place and they add a zero in the tens place not knowing it is but it is entirely a wrong decimal number that is not given in the question paper or in the question or in the question paper say for example even in the class work 
2.1 is not equal to 2.01. So here, mam is start okay, okay, add a zero. So what do they do? They push that one to the hundredth place and they add zero in the tenth, tenth place. Hundredth place is not at all given. So the zero has to be added only in the hundredth place. So all these comes because of relying on the rote memory. Then third point, poor concept comprehension monitoring. So again, here I uh, em emphasize this comprehending a math question is very, very important in the right way. So here teachers, so we when we are giving, especially word problems say, or story sums, we have to give them an exposure to comprehend a different variety of word problems, a different variety of word problems. Then problems with verbal concepts. So again, it is word problems only, verbal concepts in the sense too much of uh, words make uh, children feel, uh, what to say, fear or phobia over the uh, subtopic or the topic whatever we are giving because children don't like to uh, read comprehensions because they think it is more of English than of mathematics. So minimize the verbal concepts and supposing if it is verbal concepts also try to put it in a way as simple as it is so that the child is able to understand the concept better. Next problem with non-verbal concepts. So problem with non-verbal concepts, again, here it has to go in par equally. So non-verbal and verbal both should go hand in hand. For example, if I say zero plus one is equal to one, they will all understand it very easily. But I put if I put that same thing in the wordings, any number added to zero gives the same number. So they should be able to comprehend that both are zero plus one is equal to one an example of this particular property. So they, will, they, will, they must be able to relate both. So both should go hand in hand. So problems with verbal concepts and non-verbal concepts should go hand in hand. Then problems with process concepts. Some problems need a lot of steps to solve. For example, if it is a combined operation of both addition and subtraction or it is a combined operation of both multiplication and division. Long division. Yes, sure. So children should be able to do the steps in the particular order so that they arrive at the question. Suppose subtract the sum of, uh, say, some two numbers, thousand and thousand uh, something, something like that, two numbers. Subtract the sum of these two numbers from the difference of. So what do they do? So as we go to the previous uh, factor, they are very poor in comprehending. What they will do is first they will look at the word subtract. So they will start subtracting those two numbers. Subtract what? But they have to here they have to put a question what? Subtract what? The sum of two numbers. So first step is to find the sum of two numbers. So there, again, comprehension is very important. And they should know the process. They should know the steps. First, the sum of two numbers. Then, the difference of other two numbers. Okay, there are two answers now. What should I do with these two answers? From what, I should subtract what? Subtract what from what? That is very important. Many a time, children go wrong in this. So after getting the two answers, they have to analyze both the answers. They have to compare both the answers. From what I can subtract what? That logical thinking should enter into their brains. Then they have to do the third step. Then next comes concept problems that are specific to a certain subject, math, science, literature, etc. So certain questions are related only to maths. Certain, certain questions are related only to the GK. So they should be able to analyze. They should be able to analyze. Then poor abstract con conceptualization. Sometimes when it is abstract, children are not able to recognize. They are not able to visualize. So visualizing is very important. When it is abstract, it is very difficult for any child to understand the concept. 
this is all this is also one of the major drawback in understanding the concepts trouble making inferences so when we infer something or when we give examples they are not able to give a correct example so whenever they go wrong in understanding the particular example itself then there comes a problem in understanding the concept also yes teachers so these are the factors that could affect the child's understanding the concepts yes ma'am next so what are the schemas schema is a pattern or arrangement of knowledge that a person already has stored in his brain that helps him understand the new information so the schema is a pattern so already the brain has been uh, what to say it is made in such a way that uh, it can understand some information on its own so it is a pattern or an arrangement of knowledge so this knowledge is being already designed in our brain and it is already been stored in our brain so which helps us to understand new information not that it cannot understand what is already stored is only there uh, it is not it is not able to understand something yes the brain is ready to accept a part of new information so children can be taught to use a schema or pattern make helpful predictions so this is already being stored in the brain so this is going to help the child to understand the new concept more effectively while relating it to the or earlier topics or earlier matters that has been delivered to them yes that is why we always move from the known to the unknown yes ma'am sure sure yes ma'am so these are some of the new words which we are going Connect, to see connecting <laughs> mathematics to language basically ma'am yes at first similes Listen. and analogies are used to explain the abstract or unfamiliar by showing how the abstract unfamiliar phenomena share characteristics with or compared to a familiar object idea or concept this represents concept connection at high levels this can this represents concept connection at higher level panna mudiyala gdp la ketu solranga illa ke phone pandiya for example we can ask the children to write a poem in mathematics so they can express their understanding of concept through poems and uh, uh, it can be clear that if only they had understood the concept very well then they can bring out the concept through lines in the poem so using metaphors and similes yes, and analogies they can Dana, always dana uh, ma'am just a minute just a minute somebody has unmuted can you please mute teachers teachers can you please mute uh, yes ma'am so using metaphors analogies similes we can uh, link the strength of the children in the language area to understand the concept of uh, mathematics so when we are taking a fraction we could ask them to write a small poem about the fraction uh, this is a small poem a child has written about uh, all the four operations so this uh, also helps us to understand how well the child has understood this uh, concept So say for example, uh, she said addition is a birthday party. You will always get more. So we have, uh, so we can be clear that the child has understood that the answer of the addition is always more. More. So division is like friends. You have to share with both. So if uh, the child has understood that division is always something to share in equal groups. Multiplication is a herd of animals. It's always getting bigger. so she understood that it not it, it is not only more where she has told it for addition uh, addition but it gets bigger which means the concept of more happens on a larger scale that is what the child has understood here 
so small things like this to make the class interesting to write a small uh, imagine addition and subtraction or uh, two characters how would they talk to each other uh, small uh, uh, poems or small stories about all the uh, operations or the, the concept what we taught in class can also be used to find out the critical thinking and the understanding uh, abilities of the child it can be anything then can be even a even a painting or a pictorial representation also not necessary it could be only a language so the, whatever the child has understood or grasped they are representing it in their own way that is what is uh, mentioned here so like as men, as ma'am has shown the slide that is very effective because the when the child represents it in her own way it shows that they have understood the concept better so what is visualization next comes visualization it's a very important factor for any math classes student may form visual images or pictures in her mind that are equally as meaningful as or more meaningful than words visualization is especially helpful to students in subjects like literature geography biology and math this teachers if you could remember uh, i would relate it to, uh, in one of the sessions we dis discussed about this asking them to create their own word problem a solution is given asking them to create a, their own word problem i think the uh, teachers do you all remember that topic when we discussed about that so only if the child visualizes that particular number to any sort of instance or incidents or any events or whatever it may be only if they visualize they will be able to express it in words so for example i give a question 640 minus 200 is equal to 440 that's all so the child has to create a word problem for that particular question or it can be anything if it if she wants if she can create a maze or something like that to arrive at this answer that's all whatever it can be even a maze can be done to arrive at this answer going step by step so only if the child is able to visualize that question in a different way in a different thinking suppose 640 say something apples are packed in one uh, one carton from that maybe 200 uh, are not found good then what is the amount of apples or what is the number of apples that are found good so this all these things just like that they cannot put it in writing so they have to visualize different 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 examples so i just gave you one example as a apple but when you give such questions to the children you they will come out with beautiful questions which we would never expect or say for instance they will say they will say i took 640 rupees for shopping i was so 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 whatever whatever it is then finally some 240 rupees was left in my purse so how much do i do i spend on that particular day so there are different types of Uh, visualizations happening in different minds so visualization is a very important concept for the child to understand the higher order thinking skill questions yes next is the inference we were talking about what is meant by inference to infer is to draw a conclusion to conclude or summarize from presenting evidence so what do i infer from this what do i infer means what am i trying to conclude saying this sometimes inferring is described as reading between the lines many a times children do this they don't read the entire question properly they read in between the lines immediately they come to a conclusion saying this only this is the operation i have to perform so they start working on it without realizing that what they have inferred is absolutely wrong so what is the meaning of inference is to draw a conclusion so what am i concluding after after doing this word problem or after 
studying this question what do i infer from this what am i trying to understand and say it in my own words if a person infers that something has happened he does not see hear feel smell or taste the actual event but from what he knows it makes a sense to think that it has happened so the last one is very important so whenever the child is reading a problem she has to understand the problem already we have seen all these steps then analyze the problem then in for the problem in for the problem what do you mean by in for the problem she has to come to the conclusion as to what she is going to do to arrive at the solution for that particular problem so this happens many a times the second one happens many a times when the children are given some question papers they read in between the lines they arrive at some wrong conclusion they infer the question wrongly so finally the answer also goes wrong because they have not comprehended the question properly and in fact they didn't have the patience to read the question completely so reading between the lines is one of the major drawback when this happens many many a times if four or five lines are given they arrive at a conclusion after reading the two line first two lines okay this is what is the problem i have understood the concept correctly so let me proceed in that way so they finally decide that is the answer that they are going to write so if at all they would have read the question thoroughly or if at all they would have read the question completely they would have arrived at a different answer they would have arrived at a different conclusion and the concept that they are going to apply would have also be a different concept so this infer inference is very 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 important so before taking any conclusion comprehending the question plays a major role yes ma'am next one so it's just a recapitulation i think what are the uh, steps that we have to follow in solving the problems first one is to identify the problem identification of the problem knowing a problem then you see one and stating the whole problem second one is the process selection so uh, now i have identified what is the problem yes after that what should i do i should select a process which i can apply to solve the problem now i have selected the process i have to make sure that the process what i am going to apply will solve the problem so that belief i have to have so now representing the information clearly okay this is what is my problem and i have chosen this is the best process for solving the problem so i am representing it so stating the information in a very clear way then comes forming a good strategy for solving the problem so after representing the information clearly so now my information has made clear that this is my problem and this is the process i'm going to choose to solve the problem and i have also informed about the pro process now what should i do i have to apply some strategy the strategy which will be perfect and which will be easier and which will be effective to solve the problem so forming a good strategy to solve the problem is very important so this happens by practice only many a times we are we we are lagging in finding the good strategy or following a particular strategy to solve the problem easily then spending your own resources your resources of time energy wisely so when i say a good strategy itself all these things allocation of resources goes into that when the strategy is good of course your time and energy is used wisely if it is not a good strategy or if it is a somewhat as a strategy which is which can be applied or which cannot be applied i'm not sure whether it is good or not then your time and energy definitely will be taken for a toss so these are the steps 
so in problem in problem solving so first step is to identify the problem if you are not able to identify the problem then the problem cannot be solved after identifying the problem to select the process which will suit to solve the problem then after choosing the process you have to represent the process in a clear way so that it is made clear that this is a way i am going to follow then find a suitable strategy spending your time and energy wisely and then solve the problem next one idea generation what do you mean by idea generation concepts helps us to organize our thinking it gives us insight so what is the meaning of insight what does it give it gives insight about now go to the previous one it gives insight about the concept it gives insight about the concept what is that concept based on it's like say throwing a light on the concept before that i wouldn't have heard about that word at all now after doing that after going through that concept it gives me an idea of what it is actually that's all it is showing some light over the concept next one is original ideas what do you mean by original ideas teachers it gives insight okay what is original ideas some ideas are original and some of some of them are definitely not original idea i feel is the idea which is uh, their own idea and it, it is not taken from anybody else yes sure these are the thoughts that a person has made up himself and it is not copied from someone else this is a way in which i understand this is my original idea many teachers look for students who come up with their original ideas and not that other students have had. we always appreciate children right to have original ideas yes this is a way i understand and this is a way i apply my idea to solve the problem my right teachers many times we we find children ma'am she also have done it in the same way so i also have, i also did it in the same way so just copying the step what others are following that is not generally appreciated to organize our thinking yes yes teachers for example a student may be having a trouble getting all his homework done yes every night usually what happens this of course we see in our daily classes many a times children come with come up saying that uh, ma'am i did not do my homework i forgot to do do my homework maybe i did not understand how to solve the problem all these things many many reasons they come up with the n number of reasons so what happens when he considers suddenly that he does his hardest subject first and the rest of the subject as homework won't seem so bad so what is that insight here what is the insight here what is the insight in that particular way of solving the homework or completing the homework is yes, the child has to find a strategy right maybe the child is always finishing the homework which is very easy first and keeping aside all the tough ones yes he wants to finish his difficult subject fast very good so that insight has to go into the child making them analyze and realize finishing the easy ones first is not the strategy that the child has to follow to complete all the homework the difficult ones if it is solved first then the easier ones will fall into the line so that is the insight that the child has to understand now we talk we spoke about the original ideas always children with original ideas are appreciated and encouraged rather than children copying the ideas of something else then comes brainstorming 
And of course, we always do brainstorming sessions. Why do we do brainstorming sessions, teachers? We always do this in the class. Whenever the class is very, what to say, very boring or something like that, we always do brainstorming sessions. Why is it done? And to understand each and To get back the attention of the students. That is one way, right? Yes, then. And to understand each and every person is different and to appreciate uh, their thoughts and their ideas. Yes, very good. To understand their good thoughts, their ideas. Yes, of course, brainstorming sessions develop the ideas behind each child in a better way. The ideas are developed. And in fact, they come up with marvelous ideas. Sudden understand of a complex problem. Yes, brainstorming sessions are done to understand the solutions arrived by the children for complex problems. Very good. Yes. And what are the feasibility that is required? What are the possibilities that are required? What are the necessities that the child has to develop to understand that particular concept? These brainstorming sessions are done. So brainstorming sessions are always helpful in organizing the thinking skills. Then comes critical thinking. The word critical itself, many times students don't like that word. Ma'am, why ma'am critical thinking? Why not normal thinking? Why is it critical thinking? Because we have to uh, consider real life situations and it depends on person to person, like how they feel and what they value the most. So Very good, ma'am. Yes. According to that. Yes, ma'am. According to the situation, the child should be able to take up the decision whether it is right or wrong. That is very important. It differs from person to person. It differs from situation to situation. It differs from place to place. Everything, all these matters a lot. So critical thinking is very, very important. And of course, as ma'am said, it is differing from person to person. And this is very important for any child to develop in the overall manner. So critical thinking is very important. If critical thinking is laid foundation in the formative years, it definitely boosts their energy level in the higher classes. This we have observed and we have experienced it in so many years. Then comes creativity. Very important. Very important. What is this creativity? Creativity, I think we have discussed about this creativity in our previous sessions also. Why is creativity important and what is that? What is that? It makes it so important to organize our thinking skills. Then how can we measure the creativity? Okay, how do I say that the child is so creative? We often say that this child is very creative. On what basis do I say that she or he is very creative? How do I measure that? Uh, I feel uh, we measure creativity when uh, we have a particular situation mm -hmm. and that particular child uh, thinks about it differently and works on it differently uh, like no any uh, no other uh, normal child will do. Like uh, suppose... Uh, instead of that, shall we put it instead of using the word normal, of course all the children are uh -huh. normal only. Yeah. What the other child uh, did not think of Next the box. Yeah. Yes. Yes, out of the box. Very, very true. Very true. Let us say what the child other children have not thought about it at all. So this child has done something extraordinary or thought beyond that concept, or you could say, like ma'am has said, it's just put it in a simple way out of the box. Now, how am I going to measure this creativity? Measuring this creativity is very important by asking questions more. Yes, of course. So, by their fluency, by their flexibility, by their originality and elaboration. So, all these are the tools by which we can assess whether the child has really creativity in their thinking skills. So, but of course, this creativity helps them a lot when they are doing this experiential learning, arts integrated learning, when they are when they are solving this thoughts questions, it is very, very important for them to have this creativity. And when they do something out of the box in their class 
and even if the same problem is visualized in a different way we say that the child has good creativity yes so creativity is usually thought of as a divergent thinking the ability to spin off one's thinking in many directions it is not only narrow it is having a broader view the child is having a broader view to analyze any matter for that instance but creative thinking is also convergent for some when their creativity has a limited span when their creativity is a has a limited span shall we go to the next one next slide ma'am successful intelligence what do we say successful what do we mean by the successful intelligence intelligence itself is successful only when we are, when we say they are intelligent of course they are successful but all intelligence doesn't leads to success yes teachers successful intelligence under this we have some three criteria analytical intelligence critical intelligence and practical intelligence analytical intelligence by the word itself means they have to improve their analytical thinking skills creative intelligence the word itself means their creativity towards that particular uh, matter or the subject is broader in view and then practical intelligence even if i have analytical intelligence and a creative intelligence i should be able to apply it practically you should be able to apply it practically so i may have a lot of ideas in mind if, but if i am not able to apply it practically my intelligence may not lead to success so to become successful intelligent we have to develop the analytical intelligence creative intelligence and apply that practically to get the success next ma'am teaching for wisdom 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 means knowledge i think all of you know know that wisdom means knowledge wisdom requires one to know what one knows and what one does not know as well as what can be known and cannot be known this is actually a complicated uh, sentence so wisdom means knowledge right so the knowledge of the person requires to know what one knows i should be able to analyze and view what i know and what i don't know suppose if i don't know what would i do to know that and what are the things that cannot be known to me at all so wise people look out not just for themselves but for all to whom they have a responsibility so this is very very important so wise people means great people and people with good knowledge they always try to come out with concepts or come out with uh, subjects that will be a uh, overall uh, what to say overall uh, use usefulness to many people and not only to themselves they don't have a narrow view at all they have a broader view to serve the society and the peers which they to think it's their big responsibility so teaching for wisdom is very important this is playing a major role in building the thinking skills thoughts as a concept in education so why is this thoughts uh done in the education level so let us go back to the bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy was developed to promote higher forms of thinking in education such as analyzing evaluating the concepts processes or procedures and principles rather than simply memorizing the facts it is a framework for educational achievement in which each level depends on the one below 
often drawn as a pyramid. I think this already we have done in our previous session also. Yes, ma'am, I think already we have done this. Yes. The model is used in instructional design primarily for creating effective learning objectives. According to the Bloom's taxonomy, the hearts, hearts have been included in all the subjects just because to do away with simply memorizing the facts and applying that facts in the uh, answers that the child writes. The child has to think out of the box if she has to develop over in, in their overall senses. So comes the next one is that um, Bloom's taxonomy. Taxonomy, yes, ma'am. Bloom's taxonomy basically says, uh, uh -huh. because initially we, uh, the curriculum was such that only to test the rote memory of the child. So now it has been developed based on the Bloom's taxonomy to test, uh, to test and to develop all the three uh, domains that uh, the child has. Cognitive, which is the cognitive, domain. effective and the psychomotor skills of the child. So just like when we, uh, we saw in learning objectives, it says the student will be able to plus the verb and the action. You can take all the learning objectives if you want to uh, improve the higher order uh, thinking as a skill uh, in, uh, of a child. So this is the uh, Tomb's taxonomy. So at the bottom, you can see knowledge. So this knowledge, which actually comes only by learning and it is only remembrance. So if you want to test knowledge, you can just ask questions like define what is an area or what is two plus three. It is all direct question where the child has to apply only her knowledge. It doesn't require any manipulation, any thinking. She will just do directly. So the first three, knowledge, comprehension and application are called as lower order thinking skills or it is also called as lots, um, which doesn't require much of thinking. And the, of course, the higher levels, which has analysis, synthesis and evaluation that are called as thoughts. Uh, which uh, uh, which require higher order uh, thinking skills. So comprehension is the you know, child understands. She has the information, information, she understands and she responds to that information. That is comprehension. Application, of course, she applies those concepts. But when it comes to analysis, is like she uh, analyzes what is the concept I need to apply. Having learned many concepts, she now thinks and analyzes which is the right concept which I should use to solve this problem. So that is the analysis. And of course, synthesis and evaluation. Synthesis, she forms a, uh, she takes a couple of one or more concepts, makes a synthesis out of it and then she applies both. That is the synthesis. For example, we can have a problem which involves, uh, say, for example, unitary method or a problem that involves addition and uh, division, subtraction and division, multiplication and division. We can combine two or three operations uh, together and the child uses everything together correctly. And of course, evaluation. Evaluation is we always... Uh, evaluates whether it is not that she has done a problem but she evaluates herself before even before arriving at the answer whether the process what she's doing it is correct whether the answer uh, she is doing it is correct more often we find in subtraction uh, when the children do they forget to borrow and the answer is actually more than the numbers that she has on top we always find this uh, when children do subtraction uh, uh, problems so Evaluation is uh, is the level of thinking where the child evaluates her own answer using the concepts, which means she has understood the concept thoroughly. When children divide, we always find the quotient much bigger than the dividend itself. Sometimes children make all those mistakes. And evaluation is always better. Yes. In whatever concept they do. So that can be done only them. when the child has a very thorough concept uh, understanding of the concept which involves higher order thinking skills. So next, uh, this one, uh, Hots in Special Education and Reform. 
so when children are coming with learning disabilities we always uh, think that only repetitive uh, teaching will help uh, uh, children with learning disabilities in special education for example teaching the same addition uh, like for uh, days on together until they master it but now studies and research have found that when you teach them to think in a specific way when you teach them to uh, up, uh, teach them thinking as a skill as uh, because if it is a skill anything can be learned like just like learning uh, singing is a skill which can be learned uh, dancing is a skill which can be learned they say thinking is also a skill which can be learned through training so uh, arts is very useful uh, when it comes to teaching uh, subjects to teachers uh, to students with learning disabilities and it is helping them to be good problem solvers and uh, yes charu ma'am here we have some of the examples from our uh, yes ma'am i would like to show that only yes, so this is a simple hearts created for class 1 so fill in the boxes with the correct number from the option box so that you get the sum that manu is holding so just look at that the option box is given actually only three fill ups are only needed but here four numbers are given so the child first needs to comprehend the question what is the question i need to fill in the box or the dash from where i have to pick a number from the option box that is given so that the sum of these two numbers gives the answer what the manu is holding yes so here this is the first one so dash plus 4 is should be 11 so i should choose a number from that so such that this statement becomes true this statement becomes true so that this is the question the, just an example like for class 1 we have decided of course they should also understand that one of the option will be left without uh, filling in, going into any of the blank not necessary that all the option box should be filled in here yes next one ma'am so mala takes 5 minutes to jog once around the park she jogs for one hour every day how many rounds does she complete around the park this is a bit uh, difficult for the child here because here it is 5 minutes and here it is 1 hour so first is to understand the problem that this particular person is jogging once around the park and it takes 5 minutes for for her to complete that particular task okay if she jogs around the park it takes only 5 minutes but if she jogs for 1 hour then how many rounds does she complete so first they need to understand definitely it will be more number of rounds that part they have to understand then after that the child has to convert this 1 hour into minutes the child has to convert 1 hour into minutes here comes the concept part of it what has to be done what has to go the process by which she can solve the problem the process here starts first step is to understand what is the problem about what is she understanding from the problem what should i do then go to the process so first process is to come uh, to convert and bring them into the same units then apply the operation to get the answer so what operation should i do all these things they should be definitely find out yes next this is another uh, simple word problem surya has four notes this is based on money 230 rupees his friend manasa has the same amount but she has seven notes draw the notes with surya and manasa teachers can you just tell me what what could be the different ways to solve this problem what could be for this what should they know first the notes and coins that are available in day to day use the denominations they should know the notes and coins that are available to them so what are, what are the notes that surya has see 
if a child is very what to say in a hasty way of doing things immediately without seeing four notes ma'am there is a 200 rupee note so she will draw one 200 rupee note one 20 rupee note and one 10 rupee note that's all finished but question says very clearly she has four notes which means it cannot be a 400 200 rupee note right there are different ways of having 230 rupees ah uh, so it should be definitely 200 rupees yes then his friend manasa has the same amount same 230 rupees but she has seven notes so what could be the possibility teachers so what happens is children try out different possible means there is an error uh, trial and error method children are children are applying the trial and error method that could bring up, bring out different answers so immediately we cannot say the child can arrive at the solution in one go it goes by trial and error method for these kind of problems so what will the child do actually first when it is given seven notes what are the possibilities the child will try because already they have tried with 100 rupee note now if they try with the same 100 rupee note will it be possible for her for her or for him to arrive at the second one for the notes and notes that manasa has will it be possible so what could be the possibility yes somebody has already put so 50 rupee notes so they definitely they have to come down because already when they were given 200 rupee notes and 120 and 10 it made 230 230 rupees which involved only four notes but now it is seven notes so i have to think at 50 rupee level so let let's start drawing 50 rupees so if i put 250 rupees it makes 100 rupees then if i put two more 50 rupees it becomes 200 rupees right then how do i get 30 rupees so already four notes are over now i have to make 30 rupees how is it possible it can be 10 10 10 also right yes simply they can apply 3 10 rupees uh, yes that notes. is also one way so what we have to has come two 5 rupee notes and one 20 rupee note that is also possible correct but instead of introducing the coins here it is uh, uh, enough if we is is it not okay to only talk about the notes ma'am because yes, if they involve uh, it, is only coins, notes. it is only the notes 5 rupee note is also there right okay okay ma'am ah that's what so so the manasa's uh, way of having seven notes to get the amount 230 will be arrived in different ways for from different child so there are some other child could also get another answer so try doing that yes there is another answer see there see go to the previous one 100 rupees 200 rupees correct then so the remaining five notes should make up 30 rupees very good 4 5 rupees and one ten rupee correct that is also right so like this is actually a trial and error method but of course it involves lot of thinking so these type of questions are only be, uh, given as hots can you teacher suggest this could be for which class teachers can you just think of this this question could be given for which class of course this is also from our publications only that is for class 3 yes ma'am go to the next yes sir yeah, yes renika ma'am you are right so now draw a square using triangles this is in shapes building shapes then draw a rectangle using square this i see that there is another answer 450 rupees no notes and 3 10 rupee notes correct so draw a square using triangles so for this first they should know when a square is cut into two equal parts we get two triangles and if you make it into if you cut it into another half if it if it is made into four quarters then you get four triangles so there that concept has to be understood first ma'am go to the next one this is about shapes 
then this is the story sum which i already discussed with you just given two bars with two different numbers it can be an addition problem it can be a subtraction problem or anything like that and they have to make their own story sum yes ma'am next uh, this is just pictorially pictorially they are just identifying this is for class 1 who will reach, reach the school first why that why is the concept which they need to think about who will reach the school first the the child who is very near to the school why because the distance between the school and the house is lesser yes. comparatively speaking to the one that is farther from the school so this is higher order thinking skills for them to this is a pictor, pictorial higher order thinking skills so teachers please remember that it need not be always in numbers it can be a picture pictorial representation also and like the how the word problem was given just a simple line just two numbers from that it, it is a higher order thinking skills and this is again a, i am a three digit number so here it is ruling away the distractions i think all of you know what are the distractions like choose the correct answer we rule out the distractions here first they have to rule out the distractions so three digit number means first step itself 92 and 27 will be ruled out so only four four three digit numbers are left out my hundreds digit is not five so this is also ruled out 853 is ruled out it is not five means so only these three are left so now next come to this so these three distractions are ruled out now only these three options are there go to the next clue my tens digit is more than six so look at the tens digit so this is six this is five so here itself it is ruled out it is more than six means so only option is seven so what is my ones digit we need not go to the next clue at all we can very well complete that it is 170 172 is the answer but to double check now go to the clue the last clue my ones digit is less than four so my ones digit is less than four which is two so my answer is right so we are evaluating so the last step is actually the third clue is only for evaluation so these are the different ways in which yes ma'am next yes so this is like a skip counting a rabbit jumps starting from zero it covers three steps in one jump so in how many jumps will it land at 80 so it is very easy for the child to draw from zero it start it is in the zero so three steps come here one two three then again three so how in how many steps will it reach 18 so of course that is easy for them to count the number of jumps but at the same time a monkey also starts jumping from zero if it covers four steps in one jump it reaches 12 in how many jumps and is there any possibility of both of them meeting each other for the first time? So this is a diff diff different question. This question can be used in different way, different concepts. One is for skip counting. Another one. Can you yeah. suggest? Skip counting is the simplest one. If you go to the little higher level, for which concept can we use this? Multiples, yes, 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 ma'am. Multiples. So multiples of three, then multiples of four. Then what are the common multiples? And what is a LC? Yeah. Very good. Very simple concept to make them understand that this is the uh, multiples multiplication concept, uh, which is to be applied to arrive at the least common multiple. Very simple concept, but it is also enjoyable. But at the same time, it needs a lot of thinking to understand this problem. Yes, next I one. I think we have come to the end of the... Yes, teachers. So we have come to the end of the session. So uh, I hope a higher order thinking skills here afterwards will not be a challenging uh, uh, one for us to set also. So just reword it, think out of the box and, and keep engaging the children with different types of higher order thinking skills.